Good evening. Welcome back to the Mancunian Way. I hope you are all well. My voice is slowly coming back. God forbid all of you lot. Um, and welcome. My name is Martin. I am your host. And I am joined by the ever-present Pat. Good evening, mate. How Hello, are you? Martin. Hello, everyone. I hope we're all doing well. Sure, we're all doing better than Martin's voice. That's not difficult. Yeah. We're doing better than uh, you know, I won't say that. And obviously, we brought misery guts back. Hey, all right, everybody. It's, uh, a, cool, a, cooler day, it's a cooler day in Melbourne today. We've had <clears throat> we've had basically nearly 40 degrees for about five days straight, so it's got it's cooled down to a, a measly 18 degrees this morning. It's a lot better, a lot better. Easy to all easy, right, easy all to right Michael Fish. Calm down. Um, okay. have you been to Turkey? Turkey, yeah, give us a smile. No, I've, I've I have been, to, I have been, to, Alan, looks I have like been, swallowed a piano. I, I have been to a I have been to the dentist to have my teeth cleaned. It was two days ago. Uh, yeah, no, no, you, I know you went to the dentist, Alan. He, he called me up in tears. <laughs> Good afternoon, good evening, FIFA. Hello, I'm doing a charity raffle at Stepping Hill on the 25th of March to raise funds for the new hospital equipment. So, yeah, there you go. It's an Easter raffle. If you do want to go over, get yourself down to Stepping Hill if you are local to that establishment. Um, there you go, just giving Stockport NHS. Thank you for the link, FIFA. Uh, DC is in the building. Um, DC, we know you're a female. We noticed you got called a male the other night on a certain channel. <laughs> You're scary. Yeah, Pat heard that and went into meltdown. No, I didn't. It was a joke. Oh, my God. Uh, Big Morgan, hello, mate. Where are they how are you? Us in, in the building. Atrocious. Good evening, legend. So good to see you back, mate. Chrome Abyss, hello. Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> Uh, Kyle Walker turned a fan base into meltdown. I'm telling you, I think Kyle Walker's done something wrong to everyone this season. Evening, all blue goat. How are you? My take on this, we're in the business end of the season. Play whatever works. This isn't time for tinkering. Well, this is where we're going to talk tonight. <clears throat> I am going to start with a little bit of a rant. that Because uh, I've been on an experience that I didn't tell anyone about. Oh, boy, do I... Anyway, we'll get into it. If yep. that results, if that results in certain players riding the bench for the rest of the season, then so be it. Totally with you, mate. Um, Caribbean races in the building. Hola, mate. How are you? Super City is here. Evening Blues. Good evening, Blues. Says Jimmy John. I have a serious question. How are we going to deal with this onslaught of negative media? It's been bad over the past season, but this week has been uncalled for. Ignore it. Best way. The media, the, the media lie. The media just have an agenda, and the media will be pissed off and they'll melt down when we get found innocent of anything, and it'll go go bad because we're proven wrong. Makes Ian Wright's comments um, a bit left field, doesn't it? A bit unusual. Um, yeah, I was just saying, just ignore it, Chris. Not sure how many points behind the arse we were at this point last season, but I bet it was more than one. Yes, it was. Uh, evening, folks. Good to see Alan back. Jesus, Alan's fan club is here. All one of them. All right, Blue Monday. How are you, mate? It's Chrome Abyss. Nice to see Alan. The beacon of hope and positivity return, he says, with his tongue firmly in the side of his mouth. Um, a playing balance to City is obvious. Play Kovacic as against Liverpool 70 minutes. None of our players were prepared to play as an eight. Uh, Simo Subs, thank you so much for gifting five channel memberships. You are a legend. Thank you so much for your generosity. Smash those W's, the fire emojis, whatever you can for Simo Subs. And well done to the five people who have been gifted the five memberships and will be entered into the prize draw. And I promise you we will start the Q&A for members in the next week or two. Uh, everyone's there. Alan's smiling. Has he been laughing? Is he on the laughing gas? No, he sat on summer. Square pegs in <laughs> round holes. That was that comment just comes in at the right time. And I said Alan was sat on oh, summer. My worst segue ever. 
No wonder you take for Snow White. Blood boiling, the level of disrespect. It's the way it is. Kovacic in the middle, Grealish on the left from now on to the end of the season. Um, everyone loving a bit of Simo Sups there, ignoring the Arsenal game. Uh, you're ignoring it, right? Okay, you're ignoring the Arsenal game. It's a bit tense in it. You might get that last minute winner, you don't know, but the minute you go into extra time, but you might get that extra last minute winner. I do think you could do. Evening, Ali. How are you? Uh, evening, Martin, Pat, and Grumper. Hey, Alan, he knows you. Uh, Wayne mm. Dilworth is throwing the eye emojis up. I just can't shake missing. Uh, I can just, ca I just, I think they mean just can't, Ray. I'm presuming just can't shake missing Gundo and Maris, but we are where we are. Got to look forward. Still miss Gundo so much, though. Any ITK news? <laughs> Not tonight. ITK news tonight, like to say. Uh, oh, I could say it about Bruno. Well, I'll save that for Thursday. I missed them both too. Um, felt more confident last season being eight points behind Arsenal than I do being one. We've not been at it this season by our very own standards. It's weird though, because we're actually better off than we were last season. That's the real weird thing about this. Right, we'll get into the negative stuff. Um, I was invited by a very generous person to go on a stadium tour over the last few days. Yeah, well, I noticed what picture he sent me as well. <laughs> I did laugh. It broke my heart. In what way? Well, let... if you're going to ask me a question after every sentence, Alan, this is going to be a three-hour stream, mate. Okay. Um, right. You get there, really good. Thought be really, really good, this. Within 30 seconds of being there, I was asked, would you like a, a photograph with the three trophies? I said three. Why was there not five? She couldn't really answer me. Didn't really want to answer me. Um, and we said, well, yeah. So we got our phones out, ready to take a picture. No, 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 no. Put those phones away. You must have a photo done by Sitter and pay the moolah before you've even approached. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we declined the photograph. So we waited in the area as you go through, um, go into the entrance and everything, go in. And I thought, right, okay. There was a, I mean, you don't mind, I get it. I love the fact that other fans are there. And around the world, you know me. There was a Tottenham fan there in all his clobber. He must have come to see what trophies look like. Um, then we went on the tour. Went into Colin Bell, level two. Sat there. Lovely chap. They, they can't fault the guy. The guy was amazing. I can't remember his thing. I can't remember his name. But he was a really nice chap. Really knowledgeable. Did he tell me anything about Manchester City Football Club? No. What I got told about was how the Commonwealth, what how the Etihad was built, what year it was built. That was where the history of Manchester City stopped. There was no Aguero. There was no Belly and Summerbear. There was no even Mancini or Pellegrini talked about on this tour, by the way. What we got talked about was the hotel, the extension, why it was being built, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I threw out a couple of psyche comments. Um, you know, you know, we're going to fill this stadium when we're playing Colchester in League Two. That didn't go down very well. Um, some don't get man Mancunian humour. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um then we were then we were escorted around after a few really really fussy on taking photos. So I'll take as many photos as you want, but then they sort of get really arsy when you do start taking as many photos as you want. So we go around and we're carrying on. Um, we ended up going into the press room, which was lovely, and they did the hologram of Pep Guardiola. 
Again, can't take photographs. You can have a photo next to the hologram of Pep and you get a little white card. What do you think the white card's for? To, 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 to pay for a photograph that they take. So I've been there 20 minutes and I've had two options to pay for photographs so far now. In the two areas I've been in, I've had to pay for photos for both. Yeah, so then we go, doing that, never used to do that. So then we went into the, um, came out of there, went on to, went down the tunnel, lovely, played the old, uh, didn't, didn't show us the, pre you know, like what really, what really got me is we were sort of, and I will come back to your comments, I promise you, and this is not a kill city job. This is how do we get a balance going? This is, we, we've got to fight to get a balance here. Not, this is not a, Oh, you know, tourist versus city debate. This is let's get a balance between the two debate, and I'm gonna push this. So I'm blue in the face, but it made me cry. It made me cry when I went on this tour to, uh, the other day. So we're going on. I'm basically we were carrying on when he went and sat down. We're allowed to sit on the seats. We're allowed on the pitch. Stood out on the air, and then I thought, right, went into the changing room. Sat down, um, told us all about Pep's pre match, why this, showed us about the talk, talked about the hydro pools in the gym. We're never shown the gym and we're never shown the hydro pools. Now, the last time I went a few years back, which was a few years back, you did go in the gym, you did go in the away dressing room. We did not go in the away dressing room, we were given the Netflix promo. On the wall, which everyone's seen. Um, came out of there. And then we went to back outside down the tunnel with all the, they put the crowd music on. And so you're walking out the tunnel like you're a player, uh, which was nice. And then part of the tour was advertised as going into the tunnel club. You know, walk around the tunnel club and everything else and have a look at the trophy cabinets and everything else. You didn't see any of that. We walked straight out there, up up the level of stairs, into the concourse, and we were told that's the end of the tour. Where do you think they led us at the end of the tour? I know the answer to this. You know the answer to this because you've been on it. Where do you think the lead is, Alan? Now, this is really yeah. where I broke my heart. We went out tunnel of that club? segment. Nope. Hey? We're no. not, we were not in the tunnel club. We went out of that S exit and we went past the Garden of Remembrance. Yep. Nothing was said about the Garden of Remembrance. I'm giving a hint, Alan. They walked right past the Garden of Remembrance and didn't mention a dicky bird about it. We will walk to the shop, Alan. Straight to the shop to buy things. Yeah. That was it's, the exit uh, of the door. That was that was the tour. Last time I did the tour was when I was when I was over uh, before the pandemic. So it's um, now, you know, it, it, they weren't they weren't they weren't stopping us taking photographs of anything no, and yeah, not yeah, charging they, them. Yeah, for that. they are that's, now. That's that, that is out of order. It really is out of order. Within 10 seconds of being there, mate, I was being told to pay for tickets to have a photo with the, with the trophies, which, by the way, uh, I've, already had, I've already done the three trophies. I want yeah. the bloody five, but the five are somewhere around the world. Yeah, I know. Now, now, I wasn't going in there to do an investigation. I went there as a guy who works behind the scenes on this channel, who I will not mention them. They know who they are. They are over... They they do map they do amazing work. They worked on this channel from day one, and they wanted to treat me to go on this tour. So we went. We were both okay. disillusioned coming out. Now it's, that's a very. I'm sad. not here it's to so try and do a kill city job. What I'm trying to do is, why are we not having a balance? All I am hearing at the moment is Manchester City fans are walking away. Big Steve said on his show the other day, he knows two 50-year-olds who were at Anfield who are jacking it at the end of the season. I'm going on a podcast. I'm going on Ian Cheeseman's podcast. Um, 
and during international break to discuss this with City Matters Group. Because it is a massive issue that he's really... That, it, it, it oh, is, by the way, sorry, no, I missed the best bit. Guess what they said while we were all signing level two? Go on. At the very beginning. They turned around and they went, um, yes, and we're playing on Saturday. And just let everyone know, there are tickets available if you'd like to get tickets at the end. I'm like, I'm all right, I've got a season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> they not say. I think, I've, I think I've heard them say that or two on, on the occasion. I get it. Do you know what it tour. felt like yeah. today? And I hate saying this. Has anyone ever grab. been on a timeshare? It's a money grab. It felt like a timeshare. Yeah, that's the, it, that they're going too far. It's not on. It, 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 and, it, and they're taking advantage of one of the local fans, but also. But big time, the international fans that are on the tour because they don't know any better. And yeah. that is just a, a pure and utter money grab. They're already charging for the tour. They, they shouldn't be, they should not, they should not be charging for photographs. That is a disgrace. That's a disgrace. If people have got camera phones. If someone tells me not to take a photograph, I'll say, I'm taking one. None of your business. The only place we were allowed was in the dressing room. Yeah, you, you sent me one. We didn't go, we didn't, by the way, the three there was three parts of the tour they advertised we never touched. Tunnel club, the boxes, and going down the... Do you know what upset me the most? Any new fan, which I love. I love the fact we're getting new fans. Yeah. But none of them would know who Bell Lee and Summerby were. None of them would know who Roberto Mancini is because they were never mentioned. Vincent so that's Company was not even talked about. Aguero was not talked about. So this isn't going back to the days of Bell Lee and Summerbear. They're not even talking about players from six, seven, eight years did ago they, anymore. Did, did they go outside and, and tell people what, what Bell Lee and Summerbear's statue no, was? No, he was never talked about. about it. It was never mentioned. That's, a That's an absolute one disgrace. thing. You should mention that to the City Matters. That's a disgrace. I, I, I gave feedback. Now, the thing is... is, is the reason I want to talk, I don't think it's just a city problem. I think it's a football problem worldwide. Tottenham Hotspur announced, was it five days ago, they're increasing their season tickets by 6% and they're doing away with concession prices. Do you know what I said? Do you know what I said? They have the second or third highest average season second. ticket prices. Right second. Do, you know, do, you know, do you know why this is? Thank you, Lena. You're a legend. The new, the new, the new, the new root financial rules. After the, uh, are for, uh, you've got to increase revenue at the football clubs to be able to buy more players, right? So it, it seems like City and not in other words, not United, Liverpool or Arsenal, who have got already got the revenue coming in, have to increase prices to get more money so they can buy buy players. So they've, they've conned it into the way of they have to increase revenue. So every little bit now will cost money, including prices for tickets. Corporate hospitality, merchandise will go up, guarantee it, um, and, and, and stadium tours and take it for, everything will count. Everything, nothing will be for free. And, and that is because of these stupid rules that the corrupt Premier League are trying to do. Um, it is, mate, it is. The, 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 the thing that I am all for getting new fans, I'm all for fans from abroad. But how do these new fans and fans from abroad learn about Manchester City if Manchester City are not talking about their past? Well, the whole thing's corrupt now, isn't it? The whole not thing, even yeah. talking about 93 20, though. That's poor, isn't it? That's really poor. There was no point into the end, and that, that was one of my greatest ever moments. It was our, it's probably our greatest ever moment when you were at, at the Etihad, without doubt. And I'm not, this is not a do Manchester City. This, if anyone from City is listening, this, this is just feedback. You are losing fans. Now, if you don't want genuine Manchester City fans from 20, 30 years ago, fine. Tell people that. If now listen, I, I understand. I probably do. We all know the answer, really. That's why they're building the corp arena and the hotel and everything else. Yeah. You don't want me anymore. 
They want to increase revenue. That's what the target is to increase. You know, here's the sad thing is they don't want Manchester City fans. They want football fans. They want, like I said to you, Dirk, mate, it's all about increasing revenue. So they'll do anything to do that now. Well, here's they've got the thing, to... Howard. Yeah. Here's my thing. This is my worry. Go back to Burnley three, week, three weeks ago. And I said to you, we can't fill out our stadium on a night game against Burnley. Yep. We don't, this is going to sound really bad to people. We don't have the fan base of Liverpool, United, and Real Madrid. That's why they're trying to charge for everything, including building that extension, mate. But That's Alan, why. There's, the fans aren't there to pack 60,000 fans from abroad in. I you know, in Australia going to fly over on a Wednesday night to watch Benfica or Bloody Bird? No, but, but, Are you going to do either? But, but, what, Don't what ask me do. that because I will do something like that. So, so mate, you, you, they come over for two, three, but mainly three weeks from our part of the world, right? And, they, and if we've got games midweek, we'll go. But it, it, the, the whole thing now is driven by these new rules about how to make money. And once they've built the stadium, it's about filling that filling that hotel, getting the merchandise, prices of shirts, and everything else will go up. I guarantee it. And that's to do with the Premier League cooking cook, cooking these figures for financial fair play rules that they're, they're bending the rules so that they can get the cartel at the top. End of. It's a business, mate. It was different things, Big Morgan. Ten pound for the photo, then key rings, and then everything else on top. Yeah, it was minimum Martin, of ten pound. Martin, I'm gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a little bit here, and the reason being is because yeah, yeah, I I do I do agree with you in a way because I have been on the tour as recently as you uh, recently, you know, in comparison to when you've just been. And from my first memories of going visiting doing stadium tours, you know, best part of ten years ago. There are a few things that certainly have been missing. I mean, for starters, I mean, you, nobody ever sets foot in the chairman's anymore. You know, and I thought that was interesting because, you know, they have special rooms that were set up for Caldoun and Mansour if you ever was in Manchester to, to you know, to to talk to the owners of other clubs and things like that. And, you know, that, that was sort of like the, that was sort of like the, the work room, the war room, basically, for how all our operations were sort of, you know, were, were done during match days and things like that. And, you know, the, the other one that really stood out for me was... Um, you know, we talk about there's no discussion of the Bell Lee and Summerby statue. Well, I remember it wasn't that long ago. Everybody used to you used to enter through the the main entrance of the stadium, and the first thing they would point out to you on the right left hand side was the Bird Troutman Stadium. And they'd spend five ten minutes talking to you about the story about Bird Troutman, which was quite fascinating. Actually, quite fascinating to a lot of younger generation because they didn't realize didn't realize that this club was all about players like that. You know, um, so that was that's been disappointing. Um, since they've moved to the provisional temp you know temporary gift shop at the moment um you know you don't have the i call it the blue room you know where you walk in at the end of the tour and they have that surround video that used to play like the entire history of the club and everything that's not on at the moment okay now yeah while it is a bit disappointing compared to what it used to be i'm kind of willing to let it slide until we actually until we actually move everything into the new stand because i wonder yeah. if for the moment maybe their resources are slightly limited but i think for that reason, I think fans like yourself, Martin, and and you know everybody from season ticket holders to, to superbia members, the ones, the hardcore ones, the ones that have been in and out since Maiden Road days. I think it's up to you guys to put the and maybe maybe international fans too who who are yeah. aware of what's going on in the club. It's up to you guys to put more pressure on the club to make sure that you know they can get back to back to their roots a little bit more once the stadium expansions are in. You know, so once once everything's once they're all back to full resources and they're able to you know, go ahead and do things without it being on not necessarily a shoestring budget, but basically on limited resources because of all the renovations going on, then that's when I'll probably be finally critical of, as to whether it's, you know, it's it, there's been a massive drop in the stadium experience or whether they're actually going to increase anything. So I understand where you're coming from, but until the stadium expansions are in, I think I'm just, I'm sort of just accepting it for the time being. The problem when is, is it... When does this? When, how long is it? Two years before that stands built. Is it, is not that till twenty twenty eight. It's got to be done by twenty twenty eight, twenty twenty nine. Hmm, You're looking at another four or five years. Really, twenty twenty six or co ops twenty twenty six, isn't it? No co ops open this year. Oh, okay. Well, I, thought the stand was, I thought the stand was twenty twenty six. 
Okay. That's the World so Cup. Way, yeah. Yeah. When's the next Euros? Euros is 24, four years on. Yeah, 28. 28. It's got to be ready for the Euros. It's been done for the Euros. Okay, Call that's right. Damesh, thank you for continuing your membership for the 10th month. You are a legend. Thank you so, so much. Um, yeah. but well, Martin, no, Martin, you no, get what no, I'm saying. No, like, no. I think until they're back to full resources, eh, I think it's there's always going to be a few sort of corners cut, and they're not going to yeah, they're not going to be I as resourceful that. or as informative. Or you, there is an there is an element of the match, that the, the the stadium experience missing at the moment. Let me throw you this one back at you, though, Pat. United's grounds falling down to bits. Mm -hmm. Still talk about Buzzba. Still talk. Oh, about I agree. Him. I agree. I agree. No, I get that, but that's all they've got to talk about right now. So. You know, well, we're, we're, no, but the fact be talking is about when we're not even talking about the Aguero moment anymore. Yeah, it was all future tense. Mm. Honestly, it, from start to finish, it was a sales pitch. Do you I think, it might, do, do you think it might be dependent guy, on who the tour guide is too? Because some have been a bit more historical no, than others said, on the tours I've done. The guy said, "This isn't aimed at me, is it?" Mm. And he just smiled. Do you think it's do you think it's a common because I've heard some who've been a bit more historical than me, but do you think it's down to one, the tour guide, and number two, it can be down to the age of the the age of the um the people participating? Because I mean, like the the tour that I did before the Brentford game, there was a huge group of like um because uh, it was midterm, so the kids were out for school. So there was a couple of gr groups of school kids and that and things like that. But they did mention a bit about like the Aguero goal, and they did mention a little bit about like just the history of the club, just saying like it wasn't as it wasn't as you know it wasn't as rosy as it is now, basically. So you know they did mention a little bit, but they also you know factored in the young. They they try to cater to every generation, basically. So, but then I've also had ones where they've just talked about nothing but the history, and then I've had ones where they've talked about only the future so i think it can all depend on it's all i think it'll be dependent on the company you keep and also the and, and i think that also no, factors in it, what the tour it, guides are going to say it was two elderly people who were long-standing city fans one of them even knew colin savage and plays poker with colin savage that's yeah. why you need to know hmm. and and he, he just smiled he just smiled thank you what he does very kind of you uh, we'll get into Newcastle on Thursday, FIFA. Um, how long was the tour? It was roughly about 45 minutes to an hour. But a lot of that was you spent 20 minutes to, of it in the changing room. I remember it used to be an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, uh, no, no. For less money. We were out by just, just before 11. Mm. No, it was about 50 minutes. Yeah, it was about 50 minutes. Mm. And... That was a lot of waiting around because there was a group of people who just didn't want to ignore, just wanted to ignore the rules. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and this and this is not a kill the club because it, it's about we need to try and get an open conversation going here. There are I am listening to too many long-standing blues walking away at the end. And they're not coming back. They'll be gone. Well, and they'll be gone really? for good. And the thing is, this season, like I said, it's been talked about in the club, the atmosphere is dead. Do you think the atmosphere is going to get any better if all the locals are gone? This is what I mean. It should be the locals and the fans abroad all getting together, old and new, young and old, getting together and being one. We used to have this line of hashtag together. It's now not hashtag together. It's now hashtag give me all your money. I, I, I just, the, the thing that upsets me is, is simply because I, I don't even mean a historic thing, but they're not even talking Aguero. They didn't talk Pellegrini. None of that was talked about. It was all what is coming. It was you, all you, 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 Did you speak to the guy? Or did you report it after? The person who I went with is going to report it. They're going to leave feedback. They're not bothered, though, Alan. 
Do you know how many people? Big Steve works for the club, and they're not listening to him. I know, I know. Well, well you know, my work, works for the club. I did work, not listening to him. Well, the trouble is that I, I personally think that the, the, the marketing and the operations department at City have a lot to decide. They, they've got to be clueless, Mike. They're clear, they are clueless. You've just who's got marketing people out? in there who have no football experience. That's the problem. Who's been timed out? Sorry, who's been timed out, FIFA? Yeah, nothing against new fans. Listen, I embrace new fans. This is how the club grows. But Absolutely. But when grow if you push the locals away. And the thing is, I'm not sure if the club re- I'm not sure if the club don't realise they're pushing the locals away. It's like, it feels a little bit like you've done your job. You've got a serious point, see you now. I just, I just think that uh, the young marketing people at City are not, they're not experienced enough to be able to get where they need to get to, um, and don't realise the history of the club at all, and have no comps, comes, they have no, they have no interest in it, and they, they make very rash decisions and don't think about what they're trying to do. Especially to the fans that were at, at Main Road, which is a lot of them. It's uh, it's a different club now, mate. It's not the same clubs it used to be, unfortunately. But that's no, I the way. I, went, I don't. I, I'm not. I just think I'm not asking it to be the same club as it was. Yeah. What I'm saying is, don't go A to Z and get rid of all the put you, Alan. You, you seem to think that when I tell you what's going on, that it's a lot of BS, and I'm exaggerating. Yeah, the person I went with today thought the same as you. They came out afterwards, and you know what they said to me? You were right. Yeah, I don't lie, and I'm not even being paddle. I'm not being pessimistic, mate. I'm trying to. I want to get a solution to this. Let's get. It won't change, mate. Then, Alan, you're going to end up with a half-empty stadium, no atmosphere. No nothing, no soul. It has to change. Because if it doesn't change, they're going to be in trouble. Because here's the thing, which I don't think they will. But say, for example, they got found guilty, Alan, and you're down in Division yeah. 2, you've pissed all the local fans off then. And I'm telling you, Alan, they won't come back. I, I got told something today by somebody you would not believe. And, and the exact words were, I've had enough. I will not tell you who they are. That's up to them to tell. Well, someone has told me today, that's it, I've had enough. This, this channel was set up to bring old and new abroad and locals all together. How can we do that when the club aren't helping to do that? We can't bridge the gap on our own. The club need to understand that. That's that's my point. And this is what is this is for anyone who's watching, this is a plea to the club. Steve said it. Andy said it on 9320 podcast. Everyone has sit down and talk to us. Do some explain what you want. We can help both ways. 1894, I've been told by the stewards to not put banners up. At Anfield on Sunday, the stewards are helping the Liverpool fans put banners up. Our stewards are telling them to get them down. Meanwhile, I'm taking I'm taking flags into the stadium over the um, over the maximum size, and they don't even bat an eyelid. Explain that one. Yeah, Euro twenty eight. That's what they said. Or whatever mm. it is, it was done because the yeah, Etihad's has been chosen as one of the Euro. Is it twenty twenty eight? Twenty twenty eight. Yeah. 
it's UK been and Ireland, I believe. the venues. Because they have to be over 60,000 to host European games and finals. So yeah, it's going to be around 61 or 62,000. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, that's the, the that's my little rant over with. Um, we'll get into some of your comments and then we'll get to the Pep's jigsaw puzzle part. We'll try and get, but all I'm gonna say is anyone from the club, I beg, doesn't have to be us, speak to whoever, reach out. Something now has to be done, or you're gonna lose too many fans. I don't think they'll lose fans, but they're venting at the moment. They're saying, I'm walking around. Oh, you know they I'm... are losing them. See, you're in delusion world. Mate, they won't. It's like you you keep threatening to walk oh, away from no. the club. Alan, I will walk away. But you so won't. Don't but, tell but, me what I will not do, because I will. Well. I know. I'll tell you, Andy Soldier, Andy 9320 podcast, not renewing. People are walking, Alan. That's the part you're not understanding. They are walking. Why did they not fill the ground for Burnley on a Wednesday night, Alan? Because people don't want to go. It's too expensive. Oh, so are people not walking away? Well, a lot of people work, work away as well midweek, which they do. They do work away. Oh, I love it. Alan, and kids will... The kids don't go to the midweek games because if they're at school, they don't need a rebuild and a new manager for you at all. That is garbage. Your opinion, but it's garbage. I don't agree with it. Greatest ever manager in our history, and you want a new manager. Wow. Uh, Blue Goat, thank you for your membership for 10 months. You are also a legend. Um, no, I'm not. I just, I just want to try and do some at Pardo. That's all I want to do. I want the opportunity to try and do some at. And it doesn't have to be me. It can be anyone. Um, I've watched golf tournaments with a better atmosphere than the he had this season. Um, this is my point, Michael. When you listen to Cal Doom's end of season report, he's always banging on about how important fans are. So what's going wrong? There's a disconnect somewhere. It's, it's the operations department full of young kids who have no idea. And they are young, too young, and don't. Some of them have no idea about football. Zero. The, the only only time people out if they're being really bad. If they're having a bit of banter, don't time them out, gentlemen, please and ladies. I'll be honest. Uh, the profile pick on here is the four jobs in the club shop. So I got the pick on my own phone and was never asked to pay. I may have just been lucky, maybe. Same uh, to me, yeah. Well, I've taken hands. I've taken tons of photos and they've never. The you, should just, you should have just took the photographs and bollocks to Because I would have. So what kicked me out then? What, when you paid 28 quid? Well, I would have just done it and said, oh, fuck off, I'm not... Take one of your phone. Get fucked. Yeah. Um, there is definitely a correlation between that number of tourists and the like. It's not about tourists. It's about a it's about a balance, Virgo. It's a balance. It's a balance. That's what we need. That's what you've all been asking for, though. What do you mean? What we've got? No, no, we've not been asking for locals to be ditched out the door. Sometimes we need a balance, mate. Mm. There's no point in putting the belly and some of these statues up. And then no one ever mentioning it. Well, that's that part. That is an absolute disgrace. Because they're a very important part of our club's history. So is Bert Troutman. Can we calm down on the on the timing people out, please? Let's relax. If they're really bad, then time them out. But if they're not, let's let them have a bit of banter. They're allowed to say... I just, we're getting a bit OTT on the timing out. So let's relax a little bit. Thank you to all the mods. You're brilliant. You do a fantastic job, but just don't, don't be so keen to time out. Find out what's going on first. It may just be a bit of fun. 
Evening, Andy. How are you, mate? Don't forget savageonlinestores.co.uk for man weight 10% off. Um, right, let's get into this next thing. Pep Guardiola's jigsaw puzzle. Um, we've 10, uh, by the way, oh, hey, hey, Alan, you said people are just bent in. This is Andy from 9320 Pubcast. Martin, as I've told you, this is my last season. Both my seasons kits going back. Had enough. Why has he had enough? Let Andy come on and explain it. He's got the link. Yep. And if you come on five minutes and tell me why you've had enough. Yeah, come on, Andy. Jump on, mate. Good to have you on. <laughs> is Alan working for the club tonight? Is, is Alan on commission? <laughs> uh, uh, I can't lie. This season has felt flat. Um, how do I get a scene? The club have not told me why. Um, you become a member, and then once the once the space FIFA, you get invited on. If you can't express an opinion, Mancunian in ways now being hypocritical. Spence and Matt, whenever I said you can't express an opinion, you've heard me just say to the mods, let them say stuff. Unless it's offensive, then it's fine. So I don't know why you're coming at me, mate. I'm not doing out. Um, it's not right. I'm just giving you how I feel, that's all. Yeah, and he's there now for you, Alan. See, so evening, Alan. And, uh... You want some? You want some? You want Hi, Andy. How are you doing, pal? I'm all right. All right, Andy. How are you doing, pal? Why are you, you not sober? Andy, why are you not going next season? I've had enough, mate. Of why? You've had it's, enough I'm, for that I'm, reason. I want, be, I want to be clear. It's not the overseas fans. It's... It's the club in general, mate. It's they don't give a shit about us anymore, and that's and it sounds like oh, you know, I'm off me head because we're the best club in the world, we're the best team in the world. I'll I lo I love my club. I'll always love my club. However, I'm, I've had conversations with Martin over this. I don't enjoy going anymore, mate. I, it's really? it, it's not it. I, I get the club has to progress and it has to move on. It has to make money. la di da di da However, it doesn't mean to say that we have to be happy clappers and just be grateful for everything they do. It's as, it's as simple as that, mate. I've, I've just had enough. And again, it's not overseas fans in case... Listen, it's long-standing fans what are pissing me off as well. It's not. It's it's not just about the fans either. It's the the city matters group. They might as well call it the city don't matter group. We've see, we've seen during yeah. COVID, they don't need the fans. We were still you know smashing the money in when when we didn't have fans in the stadium. Like we've all. I mean, we always go on about the building a stadium, uh, building an hotel and stuff like that. I know for a fact, and, and this is one of the big, big reasons, right? I've sat in my seat since we moved into the Etihad. I know I'm going to be relocated away from all the people I've sat next to for donkey's years. Yeah, I can still watch City and stuff like that. But for me, my match day experience is built all round who I go to the match with, who I sit with, who I sometimes have a half-time beer or pie with or whatever. All that is going to go. It's as simple as that. And that's my match day experience. Now, if that's taken away from me, I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna go. Hey, here's a better one. I was at the game on Wednesday night against uh, Copenhagen, yeah. Kick off eight o'clock, yeah. Yeah. Half past seven, they were out of food. It's... Explain that one to me. No food at half past seven. It's not about just the food, mate. It's... No, no, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I'm just giving the examples, Andy, of the little things yeah. that are going down the cracks. Well, if you're, if you're, 
if, if you are going through, through the little things as well, the, the catering and stuff like that, it's, it takes you 20 minutes, half an hour to get, to get served because behind there, they, they, they're flicking their ass, flicking all sorts before they're serving you. And that's you're having to wait for, for God knows how long. And now, if you want to get served quicker, you have you have you have to go to the to the counter about about half an hour into the game. It's an absolute joke, right? Going off subject. Well, it's not going off subjects. I I was at the Etihad uh, a number of years ago when I was invited there when Jamie Oliver was going to do all the catering and stuff. Not him personally, but his company and stuff like that. Yeah, I remember that. And and the and the plan was right that. You'd be able to order your stuff from an app. No, pro so as soon as you get to the counter, it's there. So it's just like you've already paid for it. Boom, there. Things like if, that. If, if, if I'm not mistaken, is is the catering outsourced to another company? Yes, mate, and it's shambolic. Excuse me, I'll be back in one minute while I just sort some out. You two playing, you three play nice. I need yeah. to go and sort something. For what you know, uh, if, they're, if they're outsourced, uh, they've obviously got to fucking get it sorted out because. When people say it's the best run club in the world, I don't think it is. I, I, my Alan, I, I love my club to the bones. Like I can see a, a comment at the bottom there. We plus e Andy, Andy, maybe you have a, a shit seat, mate. You know, I go the, the, Let's look at the evidence of that. The operations department, including the ticket off. But, but that comment there, Alan. No, I have an absolute wonderful seat. It's. It's in the north stand where they're going to be rebuilding. It's Pat, Pat, you know where I sit, don't you, mate? Yeah, mate. It's a wonderful seat. It's it's in the second tier, right behind yeah, the, the goal, yeah. right right in the middle. It's the people, yeah. rep, not just at the side of it, either way. Because my me, me lad, me lad's been a season ticket holder since since two thousand and three with me, and he, and yeah. and he's only twenty six tomorrow. But it's people behind me. It's it's the whole whole thing. Even th right, people might think I'm insane here. People might think I'm really really insane when I say even as trivial as the half time. A couple of weeks ago, Martin will vouch for this. It might have been when Pat's there. We had somebody from from Cumbria rugby or something like that. Not even City fans. And Nat Nat Natalie is a, a, gr a great mate of mine. I'm I'm not I'm not slaughtering her. I love it, bitch. She, she's a proper A. So she's only doing what she's told. They interviewed these two people who've never been to the Etihad before. They give them all city merchandise and went, hopefully you'll stay a blue now. And I'm thinking, you are. Why don't you get somebody who's an 18, 90-year-old city fan? Get them down at halftime. Give them a bit of loving. Not somebody who's never been, who's who's an, an athlete playing rugby or something like that. This is where our club has moved on. We're getting no marks. Listen, Mike McLean, sorry, I know I keep saying it, he's another very good mate of mine. Martin knows this. <clears throat> he, 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 I'm sure he won't mind me saying. He got turfed away from, from the Etihad uh, doing the halftime because he had a podcast himself and he was having a bit of city humour on this pod, podcast. Now, he did this podcast with Wingman, but for some reason, because Wingman knows certain people in the club. Wingman's back at the club, and I've got nothing against Nigel as well. Nigel's a top, top lad. But little things like half-time and stuff like that, that is not the club what I'm used to. It's it's the whole experience. I know I've gone on a bit. It's your fault, Les, for inviting me on for five minutes, by the way. Because... No, no, I was, no, I was, I was interested because I wanted to know why you were disillusioned. That's why. It, it, it's honestly, Alan, and it, it's not a case of you don't know until you're there kind of thing because it, it, it's not meant that way. But when you're having to deal with some of the things there, we, we sound hard done by and we're Berry or something like that. But just because we're absolutely phenomenal, A, I'll never stop loving my club. B, it don't mean to well, say well, well, I well, that, right. I, you know, I, I'm in a situation where I moved overseas from Manchester as a season ticket holder. I moved 2007 for work and, and changed my lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, and I, I um, you know, and, and the hardest thing I have to put up with now is because I live on the other side of the world in Australia, and I, I miss going to the matches now, home and away, 
like you used to do a main road I'll, and, I'll, and I'll, yes, yeah. I'll, I'll move well, to well, your place. Let me tell I know, you. I know, I know what you're saying, and I find it very hard not going to the games. And I find it, you know, when I go home and go to the games, I don't feel I'm actually home until I'm actually in the Etihad, mm-hmm. watching a tip, watching my club. And you know, when I go home, it's it, it, you know I've, I've got a, a good substitute. We've started a, a, a supporters club in Melbourne, and Pat, and Pat does the Sydney one. Yeah. So we've got we have we have ex ex, ex man as Pat knows in, in Melbourne of in Melbourne supporters club. Who some of them have not been home since the ten pound pom days. Do you know what I mean? And they, and, they, and they go and they go and watch. We're all Manx in there, and it's it's the nearest thing to, to going home. And it's and, and you, you, Manchester City is 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 for, for for us over here. That's a part of our identity, of course, uh, is, of where we're from, and that's what we find hard. Okay. And, you, and people don't realise when they move. So one of the one of the chats in there was having a go at me because I said I don't go. Well, that might be the case now, but. Until 2000, I'm 57. I was going to uh, Main Road in, in, in 1970. How many did you have? Me too. You've had more than that, mate. When was the last time no, you went out? I think the point make, people are making, Alan, is things have yeah. changed. It, it, they've even changed in the last 18 months. I know. I, I've, not been, I've not been on since the pandemic, be, namely because my pet one, but the pandemic and two, my parents have yeah. not been well, as you know, Martin. Yeah, so I won't no, go no, back. No, really not mate, well. I, I, like I said, the, to me, I embrace fans abroad. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, if it wasn't for fans like Pat, we don't grow. Absolutely, exactly, Ex- absolutely. If it wasn't for fans like Sub Two in DC, you, you would be stuck in the dark ages. I'm not saying you want that either. What we've got to no, get no. is the balance. Listen, well, the I, that's I, all we're asking for. I, nobody's I, saying favour the locals, and nobody's. But what's happening is the locals just feel they're being pushed away a little bit at the moment. My, and when my, they go on a tour, and then you're at risk of you run. You're at risk of the club losing its soul. Yeah, and, and what, the, the thing is, all I ask for is when I go on a tour, within the first thirty seconds, I don't want them to ask for my wallet out my back pocket. Mm. Like my, yeah, Martin, no. right, right, this, this is what I've been saying to you and everybody who's listened for a while. We need the younger fans, whether it's from the UK, overseas, as much as they need us. They're coming well, up with... It's next generation. It's a next generation, yeah. isn't it? You know what I mean? They're coming up with all these brilliant new songs and stuff like that. We need that. We have we have to carry on growing and growing and growing. The, you know, the future of the young... The, the club's the future. The club is the future. You know, the, for the well, the fans are the, are the future. But when I yeah. start when I start seeing things what are going to be preventing them, my my lad, I guarantee you, and and I won't be the only one, he won't be able to afford a season ticket before long. He'll he'll be priced out of it because they'll want somebody not overseas fans, you'll get somebody say on a jolly, say an Arsenal fan or a corporate who, who'll pay stupid amounts of money for a normal seat. We we be it sounds it sounds absurd, but I just know the way the club is going, and yeah. I can do I can do one or two things. I can either just carry on going and moaning, or stop going and just just get on with it. But Alan, like you've not been over since the pandemic, pal. You, yeah. if, if next time you come over, mate, you will notice a huge, huge difference. Well, you know, it'd be sad to see if it is because you know <laughs> we're I, not I, lying. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not listening. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, 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 if it is, like, like we're lying I know, on I know, to you. I, listen, I know. Me and Steve Barsley, and you know Steve Martin, Steve, who, who helps, helps run, he's the secretary of the supporters branch here. Now, he's Mank, he's he born and bred in the, in the estate opposite the ground. And, you know, he's been over here for, since he's been about 12, I think. And, you know, and Steve's like in his, in his late 60s now. And you know, it's even he said because he he does all, all the administration for it. Even he says getting things done with City now is hard work. It's, it's like pulling teeth. It's, it really is, and it's and it's and it's and it's difficult. So it has changed a lot. You know, I speak to Steve every single day of the week. He rings me every day of the week. So it's it, 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 Steve Barsley. So it's it's it, it's it, it's it's difficult because you know. He didn't get that. We, the, 
the club, the club, the club, the, the club, the football club, is is my identity to home. That's my that's my connection to home, and, it, yeah. and that's what it is. And it's the same for all all the city fans that are from Manchester here. It's the connection to home, and the club don't realise that. They don't realise that when you live a long way away from home, the club is the connection. Do you want to know? Do you want to know what the do you want to know what the club are going to struggle with? The, the club as well as the fans in yeah. the not too distant future. The club are going to suffer with not having this much success once 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 the goat goes. Once once Pep goes, the club itself will struggle. So it's almost like yeah. for so many years we're taking all the success for, for granted. We're, we're, well, we're having our we're having our purple patch like United. Their purple patch. We're not under Ferguson. We're having our. We went with Mancini, Pellegrini, now with Pep, even more with Pep. There's going to be a point where things don't go to plan and we drop off. And then we'll see who stays and who goes. As no, far as okay. Can I just say, by the way, I went, J, JSGC, friend of the channel, absolute scholar and a saint. You're all sub to him anyway, but he's an absolute. You're saying that because he agrees with Martin. <laughs> no, no, Jay's a really top lad. No, I know. I, I, I know I, I, you know. I know. You, you're just being psychic because you're not in Benidorm anymore. Um, no, but see, Jay, you are right. a legend. Thank you for joining, mate. And oh, get you back on it. And you're always psychic because you keep booking holidays at FA Cup finals. Right. So, hear me, me out on, one, on my last point before I go because I've still got some work to do. Right. right. When. when let me try and explain what I mean by the club will struggle as well as well as the fans. Before Pep come in, we was more than happy with an FA our first FA Cup win. We was more than more than happy with our first Premier League win. Then we didn't win it, and then we didn't win it again, and then we won it with Pellegrini. So we was happy with winning. Now we've got that much success. I think even the club itself have got a bit giddy and taking. Taking everything for granted, and yeah, it might it might be human nature to do stuff like that. However, no sticky Vicky died uh, last year. Super say a daughter's still doing the rounds though, and uh, a par- a, well apparently, and, and apparently Vic, Vicky Star, somebody called Vicky Star's doing the rounds as well. Apparently, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know what I mean about the, the, even the club are taking all this success for for granted. So what can they? What, all right, what can they do to to put it right? What can they do? Start listening to fans, whether they're from Moston, Mumbai, Melbourne. Mm. Oh, I don't. Start listening to everybody. Our fan base is worldwide, right? Yeah, have a genuine meeting with a group of fans. Some abroad, mm. some local, some old, some new, and have a genuine Mas- chat. Have a proper meeting. Yeah. How, can they, how can they do that? Man? Make it human, not 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 numbers on a spreadsheet. No, but how can they do that? Well, it's simple. We've got technology because they got them on the big bloody screen during COVID, so they can do a massive Teams or or whether it's a mm. Zoom or whether it's a whatever. We've got to get fans from every corner of this round world. Not not yeah, just, yeah, everyone. Not, you yeah. should have a representation from abroad. A represent two from abroad, two here, two old, two new, whatever, and just talk. The trouble is, Alan, they won't sit down. There is a wall there. Well, that 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 that's come from what's happened in the press and what's going on as well. But the trouble is, I, Alan, I understand that. I understand Alan, that. I'm going to say this, and Pat said this a thousand times. We're the ones on the battlefield taking the grief. I know, I know. I'm not meaning this thing. And yes, people got shit on fault. I am going on other shows, not city shows, and I'm getting pelters, not of the hosts, but of Liverpool and Arsenal fans. One, one, five, cheats. Don't, Martin, blah, 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 blah. Martin, don't go on them then. No, I know. I'm not, I, I know, and I don't mean it in that way. My point is, we're sat here defending our great football club, and all we're saying is we don't feel like we're getting the defence back. The, f- the club can't say anything, mate. You know that. Oh, no, Alan, it's not about that. I'm talking about in general. Yeah. Don't I walk know. in and say to me, within 10 seconds of a tour, get your wallet out. Did you stay till the end of the tour? 
Yes, and then you cheeky bastard. <laughs> 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 was. We no, walked past the garden of remembrance to exit, and they never mentioned it. Did you ask if you could have one of the small rooms to put a bed in there to stay there did for, you life, get, for life? Did you, you get a half and half scarf off of Martin? <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. They were selling half and half scarves for the Derby. What the hell? They had them in the Liverpool end on some. Like, oh. Anyway, right, we're going to move on. Uh, hopefully. Um, oh, one each on penalties. Listen, we'll move on to our tactical side. And I think you're going now, aren't you, mate? You can stay if you want. More than welcome. No, I've, I've, got, I've got loads to. I just wanted to come on and explain. It's easier to explain than throw it in the chat. Listen, everybody in the chat, much love. I'll see you. Are you on going Saturday. on Saturday, Ander? Saturday. No, mate. No. Listen, I'm struggling to go into the. I'm struggling to go to Premier League games with, with me, head, mate. I'm, I'm joking. Not, no, but it, that, that's the way it's got me. That match. I know. No, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to put it on. I know. I'm watching it at the moment as we going along. Right. Cheers. Honestly, 9320 podcast. Get over there. Great show the other night. Everyone is welcome except me. So if you do want to go on. And talk football, <laughs> get over there. I'm the only one banned. Yeah. You are welcome with me. The problem is, I'm not banned. I'll be back, so, I'll be back soon. On, I'll be back on scene, Andy. I'll let you know. Andy, it's everyone else who's banned there. Andy loves me. He, he, yeah. even, Alan, even Alan's invited. He's already been invited. I'm only banned on a Sunday. <laughs> Sunday I'm banned, isn't it, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> but get over there. 9320 podcast, savageonlinestores.co.uk. Put the code Manway in for 10% off. And you can even get some nice hoodies or whatever, with all your favourite pictures, prints and everything on. Much love, everyone. Adios. Take Thanks, care. Right, Speak to you soon, mate. Oh, poor old Mr. Penalty. Ah. They're going out. Uh, right. Pep's Jigsaw Puzzle. JSC, JSGC is always welcome sometime. He knows that. Um. And he will. He will be on soon. He's been on many times before. Uh, Jay's the top lad. We get on well. Um, is it time to go with Strongest 11? If so, what is the Strongest 11? And how do you solve a conundrum like Julian Alvarez? Well, for a start, Julian Alvarez played out of position at weekend because Doku wasn't in form and not been playing well. And, and Jack Grealish is injured. So he tried to plug that left-hand side with Alvarez and give it a go, which he did. He didn't do well because I thought Liverpool doubled up on not just him, but also uh, Jeremy Docky when he came on and, and and plugged that hole. The second half, I don't think any of our players played well, not one apart from the goalkeeper. Oh. I think every single one of them were poor. No, uh, uh, Alan, I don't mean, my point is, though, Julian Alvarez has not played in his natural position all season, but it's like... Well, I, I, I had I, I was discussing on the text with with, with someone um, this week, and and it, and he was saying, why doesn't Pep take off Harlem because he was non-existent, especially in the second half against Liverpool. It was it was zero existing. He hardly touched the bloody ball and didn't work hard enough. It was like playing with ten men, and sometimes you have to say that. And he could put Julian Alvarez up front and play the more the false nine types from the scenario. Why don't we play now in a game when it's not working? Go back to the false nine. We've got the players to do that with Foden and, and Alvarez. Why don't we go back and play that when it when when the time is right when things are not working? And another another point is that when things weren't working last season in certain games in big games, we had we had we had a bloody good player that used to come on. Who we, uh, who we really are missing this year, and that's Gundo, to slow us down, calm us down, keep the ball, you know. And you know, I'll, don't get me wrong, Kozovic did well when he came on, and we kept the ball better more. But I don't think, I honestly do not think, when things are not going quite well on a football pitch, we haven't got the strength in depth to come on and sort games out. Where last year we did, we had the Mareses, we had. We had good, we had we had Gundo, especially Gundo, especially him, and I don't think, you know, the good don't get, these players are good players, but they're not as good as those guys we've just lost, and and I just think that 
occasionally Haaland needs to come off. When he's not doing well in a game, and there's been a few times he's done that, he needs to come off. And now we've got a perfect replacement up there. Move Milbar Barres as a play a bit more on the floor and, and, and a bit more fluid. So, so you want to drop Haaland then? No, I'm not saying drop him. There's certain games in games when he starts and doesn't do well, you've got to have the balls to bring him off. But he scores. Yeah, but, yeah, that's but that's he, my problem. That's my problem, Alan. You take Harlan off, you take off the one thing that we haven't we weren't able to do for years during the false nine, yeah, and even yeah, in the, the Aguero days, week, to be honest. Weekend, we, we, we yeah, yeah, but the week getting us Liverpool, mate, it was like playing with ten men. Well, no, I know Alan. Yeah, but know, what I'm saying is, is that he's capable of doing that at any given second. The point. I, I, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you have a point. I'm not I, having I know. A goal I know. What you, I know what you mean, and 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 certainly, like for me, my mind always goes to the the when we beat Liverpool four one last season. Yeah, you know, I still I still think that was a tactical injury, if you want to call it that, from Pep. I think he wanted to sort of play Alvarez in the number nine role instead of Harlan, and because of that, their defense was all at sea. They didn't know they didn't really know who to mark. You know, by the way, this isn't Alvarez. We're going to get into the point I'm making is Alan is. I know what Pat's saying is, if you take you, you take Harland off, the trouble is Harland can be crap for eighty nine minutes and does what he does in the derby and scores. Yeah, no. I, I, I listen. I understand that. You got to realize, to... Harland. Yeah, but if, no, let's not, not realize that. Harland, Harland yeah, yeah, off. but mate, with all due respect, there's certain games where he's not getting joy. He's not getting the service. Why have him on the right. pitch when you can have someone who gets involved more? I think the difference, Alan, I think the difference is is what Martin's saying is that, like you said, he could be crap for 89 minutes and Edison pings a long ball. He just gets yeah. off, just gets away from his defender for 30 seconds and he scores. I don't think Alvarez is capable of doing that. I'm not saying he's he's a bad player. He's, he's anywhere near as good as, as Haaland. No, but what but, I'm saying is is yeah. that if you wanted if you wanted to expect the same thing from out Al- to do the same, if you wanted to expect Alvarez to do the same thing, then it may take ten minutes of build-up play or ten minutes of just nothing but possession football for us to break for us to break down a team for Alvarez to score. I just don't think that whole long ball and muscle off the defender is in his repertoire. So yeah. it's one of those things where Harlan, yeah, Harlan can be terrible, but you know that in thirty seconds he could have it. He could he could do something that turns the game Listen, on its head. I, 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 Alvarez I doesn't have that in his game, I don't think. Or if he does, like I said, yeah. it involves ten minutes of build-up play where we have like eighty percent possession and we're just passing teams off the off the pitch. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not having a go. Don't get me wrong. I'm not having a go at Harland, but there's certain times in certain games where he's not having any any joy whatsoever. So we have got alternative way of playing. We have. No, but I know what Alan. The problem what happens is, right? I understand what you're saying, but this thing like we is put here. Alan shreds through bottom fourteen, disappears against top six. Factually incorrect. Mm. It's like you and Jack have got this belief that Manchester City are crap against the top six this season. We're not as fluid. No, you, you, and this isn't calling you and Jack. I'm, I'm the point I'm making is perception is key. Yeah. We have a perception this year that we are crap. We have a perception that we cannot beat top six teams and Haaland does not score against top six teams, right or wrong? Oh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Okay, who has the most points out of City, Liverpool and Arsenal against top six teams this year? Do you want, you'll tell me. Sir. Right. Who has 10 goals in 11 games against the traditional top six? Say. Erling Haaland. Haaland. And I know you, you, at the weekend, you know as well as I do, he, he, he didn't do it. He was like playing with 10 men. Seriously. I agree, Alan, but you can also blame there was no service behind him, Alan. I agree. But, but, but Kevin De Bruyne had a poor game. Was all right. right the first so, minutes, so hang on a minute. Yeah. People are blaming Haaland. Why, can't, why, why did nobody have a go at Foden and, and De Bruyne at weekend? Well, the second half, not one out, outfield player, not one outfield player played well. Not one. They were lucky to get away with it at weekend. We were very lucky to get away, especially the penalty at the end. It was a penalty. No, so too, it's not true because you're looking at wins. Look at points, not wins. Liverpool aren't winning against top six. And Arsenal, do you know what we're all doing with each other? We're all drawing. Yeah. I just don't think 
We've got that, the depth. Okay. We, I don't think we've got the depth of quality on the bench now. No, no, I understand that. But like people said about Haaland, Haaland this season against, um, he scored two against Burnley, one against Sheffield United, three against Fulham, scored two against United away, two yeah. against Chelsea away. Yeah. 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 By the way, everyone's forgot. Two against Chelsea away. Scored one against Liverpool at home. Yeah. Um, and then one against United. Hasn't played Liverpool. Yes, wasn't very really good. I agree. Chelsea had chances, should have missed. I think what you can say is has Haaland played brilliant in them games? Then yes, you've got a case. Well, this is what I'm saying, because the, 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 the other fans, I know they, they take the piss, but one thing they say, he doesn't do it in big games. And Liverpool was a big it's, game at the weekend. It's a, garbage, it's a garbage thing, Alan. I know. And I watched him in the second half, and I would have took him off. I really I would put Alvarez up front. I would have took him off and put Foden just behind. Alan, Alvarez like, couldn't chop a bag of sand on Sunday. I know, but he, was, he, he can't play left-hand side, mate. He He's wasn't right. better than... Honestly, mate, Alvarez was shocking. I know they weren't. There wasn't one good player outfield player, but mate, Harlan was fucking. It was a spare part, mate. He was a spare part weekend. What service did he have? I know we, we were shocking. So what service? Hang on. So what service was Alvarez getting then? Oh, I know. I thought the second half we were terrible, but I thought. No, Harlan, see, you know what we're doing is we're scapegoating again. I know. We, it's all right saying that, but. It's factual. You're scapegoating again. This tech, this text conversation that I had with a certain person that goes every single week home and away. Right. He's saying, so is, 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 is Harlan can only do it against the mediocre and poor sides? But factually, that's not true because I've just told you who he scored against. He goes home and away, this guy, mate. Alan, I'm what? just giving you the bloody stats. I know, I know. So are those stats wrong? No, but it's about getting involved in the game. Yeah, but we need him to influence the the game. Hey, we need him to influence the game. And he was doing diddly shit that weekend. Just stood there. If he has a good game, mate, if he has a good game, if he has a good game, I will say he's had a good game and played well. But, so, but against crap. Liverpool, against Liverpool, he was late. Uh, mate, he didn't influence the game. He didn't get involved. I agree. He was crap. He wasn't good. I've said he wasn't. But, you know, that's what I'm saying. We're playing with 10 men. No, we weren't. We were playing with seven men. Because Foden was a bag of shit, Alan. Oh, no. And I know, bag of crap. Yeah. yeah. Alvarez, was, yeah. bag of crap. Yeah. That's my point this season. I'll talk quieter. You, you may... My point is, what frustrates me with you, Alan, you go with the agendas. <laughs> you love the agenda. I don't know why. No, I'm just... But I'm, I'm, Silver could come in your house, take a big dump on your... Take a big dump on your, on your living room floor and you would go, you all right, mate? I'll give him a pint. There you go. <laughs> no, the question, no, the question is: If he came home and Bernardo Silva is in bed with his missus, what side? What side would he get? He took him? him in. He'd make him a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, do you know Julian Alvarez hasn't scored against any of the top six teams full stop this season? Mm. Well. We'll see what he does in the summer as far as oh, transfer no, window. No, it's not about... I think you're ranting, like Pat says, you're ranting about the um, the Liverpool game. Because <laughs> you, yeah. you didn't get your... Hold post- the comment up. Stuff Go on. You, were, you, know I'm right, I, you know I'm right, Martin. You know I'm right. No, I know he has, and I fell for it. I, yeah, I, felt, I, I tried to, I tried, yeah, I tried to get, get on. Another comment up there I for tried, the good people. I tried to get on, on, on after the Liverpool game and, and Pat said, no, you're not. You're not coming on. He's texting me. Exactly. No, yeah. Because I knew this would happen. Because <laughs> I was pr- pretty pissed off. We, this this show could have been about like your city city's favourite shirts and the first topic would have been like, oh, I'll give, give my two cents in about the weekend. No, right, Alan. So here's my point, Pat. 
is it time for Pep? To, and everyone in the chat, is it time for Pep to get the best 11 and screw this? We've got 10 games left. We're one point behind. That's all we are now, one point. We 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 can still win this title. I still think we will. And, uh, and, Is and, it time and, uh, to stop this rotation stuff? It, it, it's bizarre. We're in, we're in. We've got one point behind. We've got a chance to win the league, and we played nowhere near the level we did last year. Not nowhere near. It's bizarre. Thanks, Pat. But um, yeah. Look, I say um, yeah. The rotations are done. International breaks here. Chance to you know not go back to the drawing board, but get everything. Get all our ducks in a row and go ahead and go for that final stretch of the season, just like we did last, just like we did this time last year. Yeah, be ready to go. Hopefully, Jack's in. Hopefully, Jack's uh, mended and his head's in a better place and he can go because I felt like we really missed him on the weekend. And oh, I ma- think that's just proof ma- that a fully fit, a, ma- yeah, ma- a fully uh, yeah, fully fit Jack Realish will uh, do wonders for this squad uh, going for the um, yeah. going Absolutely. for the, the push, going for the push on all three trophies again, again. Yeah. That's it. I think. I think. I think this international break is going to be a um, little bit of a blessing in disguise for us. I'm when is it? When is, when is it? When is it? Next, next weekend. Next weekend. Is it? Oh, yeah. Thank God. For that. Just, we need no, no, so no, Arsenal. No, so, no. so Alan, after we before we play Arsenal, they they have no football for nearly three weeks now. I mean, the only reason what? I'm thinking is is I understand that we want to play in a Kanji or an Ake or a Walker, and we want to play. Whoever now, but to me, with 10 games left, play the 11 now. Play he, did your last year, 11. he did last year, didn't he? But that's what we need to do now. We need to get Jack Greenish back this... in that thing because yeah, I'll tell you what, you could see the difference because we kept losing the ball on that left hand side all the time. Well, this is well, not only that, put folding into one position, yeah, because now he's got to figure out how do I get Kevin. Folded because for me it's a very simple thing. I don't think right now, with the players we've got, without majorly dropping somebody, I think you're going to struggle to get a KDB and a folding together in the midfield for the rest of the ten games. I know, I know. He's playing him out on the right hand side at the moment, isn't he? This is going to sound even more awful now. It's time Alvarez spend the rest of the season on the bench and we go again next year. He did this and time last season. As a, you come on as a sub. He now. did he, he did this time last season and turned yeah. into a super sub. Comes on as a super sub now. Yeah. Same for Doku. Yeah, I agree with Doku. Doku's not Doku do, 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 probably should have done. Let, yeah. let him come on as an impact sub now in these games. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. How far is away from how far is Greenish away from being fit again? They want anyone hopefully, know? hopefully back for, for Arsenal. Right. I'll you be straight with you right now. Do you know what I do the rest of the season? I go Haaland up top, folded on the left, Bernardo on the right, KDB is 10, Rodre, Kobasic, Ake, Diaz. Walker, uh, Diaz, Stones. I just can't decide between Walker and Akanja. Do, do you, um, so you're playing yeah, double point? folded on the left. I just, for right now, needs are a must. Yeah, so you're playing double pivot, are you? No, because Kovacic and Roderick can interchange. Roderick can be the eight, and then Kovacic can be the six, and then vice versa. Mm. And when John Stones goes forward, that forces Roger to go further. And the forward. bench should be Nunes, Doku, Alvarez, Walker, and Akanji, depending on which one you want, and Gabardiel, recall the race. All them to the bench. Or because I don't know where we're going to be with Jack. The problem is with Jack, I think it's too late in the season to come in and start being impactful in the way that he probably wants to be. Yeah. And he's frightened now. He's frightened with his. He's, he's going to take a bit, a few weeks to get, because he is frightened with about his groin. Definitely. I, I, personally, for me, I'd give Jack Grealish. See you next season. Yeah. Come back mentally, sort yourself. Come back next season. Yeah, I agree. But you know, it was disappointing at weekend because I, I don't think we helped. We helped ourselves. We took the foot off the pedal. Said this in the in the, in your um 
in your space. You know, we scored and then stopped. We just stopped. We just took a foot off the pedal. The intensity went straight out of our play as soon as we scored. And we let them. And then when we made the mistake of them scoring, it we, we, we lifted their, their crowd and that was it. It was like the Alamo. I just thought, shit, if we survive this, we'll be lucky. And we managed to get through the game. And and then and and then uh, Kanji does that at the end. I could and you text me, Martin. I couldn't fucking believe him what he was doing at the end. He got away with it because it was a penalty, definite, unbelievable. We got away with murder at the weekend, but it was a good point. It was a good point at at, at Anfield in the end. And, and it's not even about screwing anything. I mean, it's just the parts of. I think. <sighs> I think he tried to be too cute at Anfield. I Ooh, was Docker. sitting at suits, controlled, pause of football. Yeah. 99% of our players are controlled based possession footballers. Yeah, it's and Docker isn't. Between playing controlled, fast passes and utter chaos basketball. Yeah. We allowed Liverpool to turn that into a basketball game. Yeah, we did, and uh, all of that second half, we we hit the post and and and, and hit the bar as well, and you know, it, and we had our chances to win the game, but God, we're under the cosh. Will we ever? Anyone know why I'm laughing? No, why are you laughing? Pat knows. Do what I? have you done now? Because I went, Pat. What do you think? And then Alan went um, off on a five minute spiel again. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, uh, what do you think? Oh, I don't know, I agree with Alan. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know, mate. What was the fucking question? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Now look, I, I think well, we're we're talking about lineups and that for the for the rest of the season, yeah? Is that sort of along the lines of talking? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Look, I just think I just think international again. I, was, I said I said before. I said international to me, for the remainder of the season, international break will give us time to just set reset ourselves and then go for that run. Get ourselves into into, into the form that you know got us on those winning streaks that we had last season. I just I just feel like this is a, it can be a rinse and repeat of last season. We just know what we need to do. I preferred that we chase rather than being chased. It's usually. We're more, we're more we're, we probably play better football when we do it actually when we when we're chasing opposition. So for me, it's a, the the idea of Alvarez. Yeah, he has to go on the bench now, almost on you know permanently, and then just play the super sub thing. Now I just keep thinking of this whole treading on toes because if it ain't you know if if John Stones moves forward, then Rodri's going to want to move forward as well too. You know to be the the gap in between uh, with Kovacic is you know in between the two of them. And then you're always worried about Kevin stepping on Foden's toes and then Foden stepping on bloody Bernardo or whoever's going to move out to the left or to, out to the right. I just, yeah, I just want a, I just want a solid plan, a solid foundation, a pretty much a lineup by almost by default. And the only factor that's going to change is maybe, maybe an injury or player being unwell or something like that. I just want, yeah, I just want, I, I don't want any more tinkering anymore. I want the final product and I want it ready out there on the pitch for the remainder of the season. For these last well, 10 games and these four or five cup matches that we've got. Hopefully he'll do that, won't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the Cal Walker interview? Fine. I think people are asking about it. What he's Fine. talking about, Saudi? Yeah. Well, he's just speaking the truth. And those yeah. people are going Fine. there for a, for a cash yeah. grab and Going for going for you know going for a big payday and you know, to be honest with you, it looks it looks like a somewhat competitive league actually. So yeah, if, if, as long as they're still getting some decent game time and getting good pay good pay for it, so the then went, if anybody's the in their thirties and that, then all anybody in their thirties is looking to try and get a bit more game time and, and that and still get paid good money for it, then fair fair play to them. Laporte no went player down. deserves to get booed, Harry. No player. Come on now. I just think Walker. I just think the right thing for Walker would be is once he's once he knows he's starting to slow down, then head back home to Sheffield for a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Because I think you need you need that you need a real veteran presence in a club like that to to give him a bit of a rebound and you know hopefully they can start again from next season in the championship and you know start getting you know start getting 
you know, start getting things in order. So not only can they look at getting promoted, but then become a don't fall into the yo-yo club trap. And I think if you get a veteran presence in the play in the in the club there, I think they might be uh they might do some um they might be able to do, play some better football. See, Davy was telling you, Arsenal looked so much better than us. We, we had a trouble when it was should be striking fair. Pep must perform a miracle. We're three months from beating, mate. I think what he's saying is that there is a difference in the way we're playing this year. It's not it's not as fluid. Um and I think it's like you said at the start of the season, Matt, and we had this conversation, is that how do the players keep motivated after winning three titles and won everything last year? Because he changed the system. Because he changed the system, but and I don't think we look as fluid. I don't think we look as good. And we and and with this this year, there's been quite a lot of games. In fact, a lot of games where we switched off during games. And we conceded that goals. Last season, Alan. I know, but not as much as this year, mate. Not as much as this year. Nowhere near. Hey, Tom, you never be a player to play, Harry. That isn't our, that isn't us as a fan base, Harry. We don't do that. Don't boo our own. I don't know what Harry, I don't know what Carl Walker's done wrong, personally. I don't think he's done out No, wrong. nothing. It, it, just don't read into it too much. Don't read. I don't think he's done What he's doing wrong. is he's just talking about what players are already doing. Yeah. He's discussing exactly. what players have already Good done plan. and what's to plan. come. There's nothing, I think, nothing I think wrong with some have an agenda said. on Carl Walker this year for whatever reason. Hmm. I said this to you, Alan. Some fans want to win 5 0 every week. That yeah. is impossible. They're in, they live in the FIFA verse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And don't, yeah. I think it's the whole goal difference thing, too. People, people love that idea of us always having the goal difference. Like it worked as if you almost had like a, a provisional, an additional provisional point on top of your opposition, but look, I look at Arsenal's streak at the moment. Yeah, sure, they're playing some, they're playing some good football at the moment. They are playing very well, but the opposition, but the opposition they played too, sort of gifted it to them. Like, where was well, the way Sheffield United played against them? Well, how come they never played like that against us? West Ham, terrible form as well too. They'll they'll never play like that when they play against us. They're almost handing three points to them on a silver platter every time they play. Yeah, and, and and you know, and and a team again. I've said it before. A team like Arsenal, quality players, but they've got a manager that plays way too much on emotion. And yeah, from what I saw of that match against Porto today, you know that if they if they had everything right, if if they, if they had everything right, they should have they should have been you know two or three up, you know, you know, and and won the the tie convincingly. Now they're going to be questioning their form and questioning the way that they played. And even the Brentford game too, you know, regardless of the, the late habits goal, they're going to, they're going to have, you know, the best part of what three weeks to mull over how they play and how they think they should play. And then as soon as they're back into it, they've got to come to the Etihad and play us. And they'll have, they'll have that, they'll have that fixture, the, the, the four, one fixture last season in the back of their minds. They know Kevin De Bruyne is back. They know he, they know he loves a goal. He, know, he, he, he excels against Arsenal. But he, he turns, no, no, I, no, I he that, turns into his prime when he plays against them. So people saying he's sort of going to Saudi. Well, Alan was asked questions and said, "You never know what's going to happen in the future." We're not all going mad at Haaland. No. Bernardo Silva asked for the asked 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 for the fifty million pound release clause, which no one will pay. Yeah, they will, Alan. Yes, the list is pretty low, though. It's a pretty small list. Anyway, that's for another show. That's for another show. Not really. Not really. 50 million is not a lot in today's money. Um, to put it bluntly, there, loads of players have said, talked about futures. Well, why, is it, why is it Kyle getting the shit? I, I, I saw the interview and I saw the one he did with Real Ferdinand. As well, and he was quite honest and respectful. I thought he, he spoke sense. I honestly think the one with Real Ferdinand was disrespectful because the one thing I will say yes, Arsenal are good. Arsenal are good. Well. 
Chris no. was playing well. And they fought well. No, and they Alan, fought well. But their fans are becoming so arrogant. He's unreal. Yeah, well, well we put no, up with Liverpool. That guy. Oh, no, no. Mate, 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 mate. It's, like, it's like Liverpool. Their fans are completely arrogant. You know my opinion on them. And you know, and you know my. And uh, to be fair to Arsenal, they are playing good football, and he's bought well. He has bought well. The fans are gonna are, are, are like last year. They're excited. They think they're gonna win it. Well, they have to do it. Alan, Alan, playing good football means you win. Doesn't guarantee you anything. Well, mate, they played back. They said they played better than they played they did last football year. last season. Alan and one sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fans are a nightmare. We know what they're like. No, Alan, the point I'm making is if you'd have had the respect <laughs> instead of being a bit rude, I was trying to say the co-host of that interview is an Arsenal fan. Yeah, no, he is. And I he was it. completely and utterly arrogant to Carl Walker to a point yeah. where Rio Ferdinand even pulled him up and went, Where's this? where have you got this chest from? What have you won? To have this chest to talk about Kyle Walker. Oh, I know, I know. But that's, what, that's what a lot of the fans are like at Arsenal. The thing Alan, if you want to get a good idea of just how bad it is over the, in the some of the Arsenal fan base, go and look go and look at some of Lee Gunner's videos. Oh no, the way no, he, the way he breaks down they, some of the stuff that they put on Twitter. Yeah, mate, it's mate, like, we, I'm, I'm I know we've got a very, very small minority of, of people in, in, in the city, you know, city fan base that do that sort of thing, but it's nothing on a level to what they have to go through. I know, listen, they're in tight, they're, they're, they're like Liverpool fans, they're in, they think they're entitled to win the league every single year, even no, when no, it's no, no, you, no, what it is is, is, is that. Is that they create that, that, that a lot of their fan base have these people now that create these false statistics to sort of justify why finishing second in the league was a great achievement and that, like, yeah. And then you got people like Lee Gunner who've been going watching Arsenal for the best part of 30, 35 years, who are basically saying like, since when is the success of a football team determined on what an XG is or, or expected assists or the fact that Bukayo Saka did one certain thing in one game, so that's that's justified as to why he's better than Phil Foden, which again is the dumbest argument in history because you're trying to compare a natural midfielder to a natural right winger. It's absolutely pathetic. Yeah. But they'll yeah. they'll go on this abs these absolute tangents. It's absolute, um, you know, just complete and utter waffle talking about why yeah why irrelevant statistics that justify why they think finishing in the top four was ex as as important as it was for other clubs winning certain trophies. Yep. Right, there was sorry, one guy who was on the other day. There was one guy one guy on one of the shows the other day um, who was talking about how he thought Arsenal finishing second in the league last season was a bigger achievement than Leicester winning the Premier League. That is thinking, just, just that is just diabolical the thinking, I'm in my opinion. Gonna, and I hope our fan base never ever get to that level. And he's put in no agenda, it should be professional. The company gonna decide their futures mid season. We're not mid season. We're not mid season. We're 10 games away from the end. Where's the mid-season bit come from? Number two, Gundo had decided his future, yes. Yeah, he did. And we met, and yes, I think everyone agrees we we do miss him. Company knew he was retiring before any of us ever knew. Do you think he yeah. just decided on that Leicester game that he was done? No, he knew before. This is what I mean, it's... It's what it is with Kyle. People are upset with him because of his social life. That should that's his social life. Let him do what he wants. I think too many people are judging the way he's playing is the way he's been told to play. We play yeah. overlapping fullbacks this season. Blame Pep Guardiola for that. Yeah, I don't think we uh, blame so. Pep. Yeah. We didn't play that last year. I, I'm sorry. Listen, has Kyle been amazing? No. But so many people running agendas on him, big time. Yeah, that's because that's because of his private life. It, it's, you've got to let the private life stuff go. Yeah. Believe it or do. not, I mean, here's one for you. Lucas Paqueta knows where he's going next summer. Shadeen, is that disrespectful? Yeah, well... Yeah, yes and no. Works both ways, ladies and gentlemen. Works both ways here. Why can we be chatting away with Paquetta or whatever? And well, that's okay. But Kyle Walker, mm, wrong. I've heard Nunes is going the other way. 
No, you haven't. <laughs> I have proved to come on shoot with you, Martin. He's become a failure of a club captain. But how? You won't tell me how. It's a statement with no evidence behind it. Yeah, Harry, you can't be a failure until the season. Until the, you can't I'm be caught until the squad, season's done. Full fit squad couldn't even beat most weakened team. Gutless player and clueless manager. Three months unbeaten, knitting. You, you're being a bit spoiled there, knitting. Being a bit spoiled. Come on, relax. We haven't won a. We haven't. Man City quality dipped so much they haven't won a game against any any big team. Now was Arsenal, now was Liverpool, except mm. the FA Cup. Yeah, and it's in all the top six have had a bit of had had up been up and down against our fellow top six clubs. We're all drawing with each other, mate. Mm. In the space of six months, Walker's gone from potentially the best right back in the Premier League to let's drop him. Spot on. Um, I, I, I do think there's been a lot of, yeah, a lot of panicking for some weird reason. I don't understand it. Liverpool played with three academy in the starting line against an absolutely bad setter. Did we lose? He's caught positionally too many times. That's on Pep, though, Andrew. Because Pep tells him to go back. Paquetta doesn't show his show he's gone off. No, he just hugs the managers and the coaching staff and everyone at Manchester City Pardo mm. during the game. <laughs> he makes it obvious without saying a word. Is that fair as well, Pardo? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Come on, I, I think. And all he said was, it's an option. There's 10 games left. By the way, I keep saying this. Players will be organising their future now. They don't they wait till the summer. Mm-hmm. Players don't do this. And with, the, and with the Euro, they'll have limited time to do that too. Yeah, they, 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 they don't go, they don't organise it in the summertime. They'll do it no, now the, with the, agents. The agent, it's the agents that do it, not the player. Um. Uh, one of the mates went down in my after the bar picks. Maybe such shit happened to me. I'm not judging him. I can't judge people for having a private life, Bray. Because if we did, I wouldn't be on there. Alan's got a private life. Pat, we, you tell me a, per, a human being who's not made a mistake in their life, and I'll show you a liar. Mm. Yeah, correct. He's, he's with that sin cast of first time. It's going to cost him a lot of money, but that's his money, not anyone else's. It's his issue, what he does in his private life. This is what caused the Jack thing, because he went away getting drunk. Guess who went away getting drunk with him in the summer? Earl in Ireland. He went to Ibiza. Phil Foden, by the way, is a bit of a naughty boy sometimes. No one says anything about good old Phil. Do you not remember the Phil Foden in Iceland? The Phil Foden on the beach when his missus was going through his mobile phone? Found a few naughty pics. A few naughty text messages, apparently, allegedly. And this isn't calling Phil out. The point is, the human beings. I, you know, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I, I Listen, I think we'll be an arsehole. Well, if we don't, we're out of it. Yeah, but if we don't win the league this year, so be it. Exactly. We're not going to win it every single year. But but you can imagine the meltdown if we don't. Uh, If City every start three academy in their lineup against full fit Liverpool, Rico Lewis has played against Liverpool. Phil Foden played against Liverpool, Nitton. Come on. Um, then Jack, have a go at Phil. Have a go at Erling Haaland. Have the same energy for all the same players, Jack. Not just your favourites. I'm going to have to look. Point. I'm going to have to look you and leave you, mate. Because I've got a meeting in ten in eight minutes. Phil so. just goes fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I'll speak to you later, Dave. <laughs> See you, Alan. See you. Bye, bye, See, you Alan. See you, guys. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Anyway, um, while I'm just getting these last few comments, anything you want to say, Pat? Mm-hmm. Did you go with no. the, what is your strongest 11 for the rest of the season? <sighs> oh. Can I put like two players in one position pending opposition? Because again, it's Walker or Kanji on the right for me, depending who we play. Um, obviously, it has some goal. Um, Stones, Diaz, Ake, Rodri, Kovacic, Bernardo, KDB. Foden, Harland. Am I missing one more? Say it again. I'll write it down. Say it again. Yeah, I better write mine down. Yeah, it's <laughs> out for about four weeks, so we'll go with Altega at the minute. Well, regardless of injuries, it's just my strongest. So, uh, yeah, Edison and goal. Yeah. Walker slash Akanji, uh, pending, pe- pending opposition to me. That's always depending on who we play. And he wasn't treated the same power, though. Wasn't that's my point, Pardo? Wasn't treated the same. Come on, you're all right. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm just writing one up. Yeah, um, I'm totally relaxed, but I don't think it's supposed to in the bar is private. I'm not saying it is Bray, but he's picking up a fire extinguisher and trying to smack someone around the head with it. Private. I'm not honestly, I'm not even calling out Phil. My point is it's the private lives. It's not great. I'm not saying it is, but the guy was going through a lot of issues. Do you remember John Stones in his first season when he had to go and see a counselor because of what was going on in his life? Don't forget the COVID season, too. I know he was, a, he was a mess. He was a mess that season too. And then don't forget as well too. Remember when he got injured at Leicester in the Centurion season? He wasn't the same when he came back because I think that whole hamstring thing would played on played on him mentally. He never played. He probably never played more than at fifty percent, fifty percent full full capacity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So look, yeah, it's hard for me to it's hard for me to put like a, an absolute definite set in stone lineup. Because I still want to alternate players players here and there because depending on position. And, of course, we're playing every three days. But for me, it's Edison, Walker Walker or Kanji, again, depending on position. Stones, Diaz, Aki, they met, that pretty much – the back line speaks for itself. I would probably say Rodri and Kovacic, only because I think Kovacic is starting to figure it out now. And I just like that extra security for Rodri, given the fact, too, that he's only two yellows away for what? He's two yellows away from suspension, but he's only got three more – Three or four more Premier League matches before the reset. So I don't, I don't mind. I, I, I like the idea of just Kovacic in there just for a little bit extra security. Once, it, once it's reset at thirty-two, Roger can go play on his own and expand the midfield. Uh, you know, know, offer, offer more bodies in midfield. Ten, if you're not happy, mate, go. I know Albain, I know Nobbins. So don't come in here trying to cause trouble. When we all talk to each other privately, mate, don't do that. You're not happy, leave. If you if you're only a city fan for the trophies, sorry, mate, I can't help you. Carry on, Pat. Yeah, so Rodri Kovacic, and then uh, obviously Harlan up front, but the midfield. For three positions, four different players, Foden, KDB, Grealish, and or Bernardo. Rotation, you know, right, just those basically what, thir- 11 places, 11 spots, 13 places, just a constant rotation between those guys. And then depending results, obviously just rotating with your super subs, your Dokus, your Alvarezes, get them on for your 30, you know, get them on for your 30 minutes, whatever, whether you're chasing a game, holding a game, wearing down opposition defenses, just that's it. I think. You know, I know we've got a small squad, but at the end of the day, it should just be that should be the strongest 11 provisional 13 
pending rotations and who's the best player for who we're opposing and then expand it to maybe 15 because you're going to have those critical <laughs> super subs that come in and do what they need to yeah. do in, in a match. Right. That's it. So that's why I think it's just too late. It's too late in the season to say, this is the 11, this is how it should be. Yeah. Because there's no, always going to be, low. yeah. Because there's always going to be in-game management, man management, player management, um, you know. And again, <laughs> the opposition determines everything. It determines most of it more than anything. He's mad, isn't it? Uh, LB, thank you for your generosity, mate. Thank you. Can we just focus on the two game? We will. I personally, like I said, I think we'll win the league. I think we're way ahead of the building. Let's get to Newcastle on Saturday. Which we will on Thursday night. Um, Sean say, if fit, Edison, RKD, or Stones are kind of I think it's Doku. No, 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 no. Not at this point in the season. You kept it hard about FIFA. I mean, you're sure your team, mate. Your team, your opinion. Um, no, no, listen, Nitin can do what he wants, but what I want have is come on here and call me and all you great people and Pat deluded. And then try and name drop LB and Nubbins when I know them. And I speak to him on the regular. I'm on LB show on Friday. So let's not do that. Trying to cause rifts in the city fan base. You know what I mean? We don't we don't play that game. City content yep. creators. Martin, are, other are fan, fan bases have, have content creators who just try to keep it real and honest. And yet they have fans that go in there and have the nerve to say that they're deluded. Like as if not living in an alternate reality is is somehow become the reality. Yeah, no, you spawn with that part. Yeah. When when is it be, why has it become like that? I, I don't think understand. The thing is, Harry, I think the interview was done to put it to bed. I know for a fact against Newcastle away, he didn't really want to play. Well, I was told this, well, and you know this, didn't you, Pat? I told you at the time. Didn't want to play against Newcastle, but because we had so many injuries, Pep said, "Will you do me a job and just play?" Mm. And he did. And and, and if you notice at, at the end of the game, Harry, Pep and Walker had a private embrace, and Walker was in tears. And then it came out that Pep knew about this, which is why Pep went out for a meal with him at the start of the season. Because Pep, the reason why Walker was going to Bayern was not because he wanted to go to Bayern, because he was running away from what was about to come out. And Pep said, no, be a man, face it, we will help you. We are supporting you 100%. Pep knew about this, Harry. Why he took him out? And come Martin, look at, the, look at it this way too. Since, since the Newcastle game, what would you say for, Walker's form's been like? It's been... Relatively good. I think he's been decent. He's been he's been at least he's been at least decent or, or been good. Yeah. What does that say? He's got the players, he's got the managers, he's got the club behind him, and none of that too. What's he doing as a football? What's he doing as a footballer when problem when he's having problems off the pitch? He's using football as a distraction. <laughs> he's focusing on his game, and that's why he's playing good football now. He hasn't had a bad game. He hasn't had any sort of major brain farts that have resulted in a salute dropping points or anything like that. He's been he's been good and he's been consistent, as you should expect from a captain as well too. Yeah. So I think I think the way he's sort of rebounded and responded from this has been has been has been great. You can't. Pat, can you see what Andrew's done there? Some will get that. Some will not. <laughs> <laughs> 1994, 95, was it, Andrew? That's right, yeah. We signed John Burridge on an emergency loan because all our goalies were injured. <laughs> he was about no. 40. Was he, how old no. was that? I'm just, I'm, I'm just checking it now. Was he 40? You know, he was, well, he's 72 now. So, yeah, yeah he, he would have been in his 40s. Courses. He would have been in his early 40s, yeah. He only played one game, I think. I'm sure he only played the one. <laughs> and he was at Main Road. I think he was at Main Road. Because I know Dibble was injured. And was it Margetson who was injured? Well. Colton had just gone to United. Gone to, gone to United. And then went to Sunderland. 
Well, we know what's we know what's going to happen. Hey, Martin, we know what's going to happen, mate. We'll be in the wow. virtual conference. Yeah, we'll that's be... uh, Gordon out with six, seven months. Wow. Anthony Gordon. Oh, yeah, we'll discuss that with the Newcastle fans on Thursday. Wow, okay. Um, I was going to say, so you know what will happen next season because history loves to repeat itself. We'll get we'll get our own version of John Burridge. We'll be in the Vauxhall Conference saying we'll need to call an emergency line for Jimmy Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Last day drama to keep them up. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you don't mind me angry tonight, what it is is I knew what Alan was doing. Alan came on to vent about Liverpool because... No, you didn't know because that's why I commented. I was saying you fell for the yes, bait. Right. And you know it. I didn't you know, know it. it. Yeah, and I didn't Alan, want to say anything because I, I had a feeling it. you would. I fell for it and yeah. Alan got me going. And then, listen, I'm all for opinions, <laughs> but what I don't like is trying to split the city community when we're not like that. I just Because I go in LB, I don't agree with everything LB says. JSGC was in there earlier. We don't always agree with each other. That's fine. We respect each other. And we don't always have to agree, but yet you should respect each other. Uh, my son with the two pounds super chat. Thank you. Get the hay on emerging salon for three months. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Martin Margotson. Did he play outfield? Do you know who's the best goalie we bought on loan? Brought on loan. Who? Hey. You won't remember him. You might. Anyone no, guess? Don't. Icelandic player. Man of the match against Tottenham in the FA Cup. Anderson. Annie, 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 Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, that's going back. Annie, 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 Anderson. That's going back a bit before my time. <laughs> no one. When Same was it? season. 94. No, 2003, same season. I don't know, I remember him. Looks like, anyway. I remember the save he made and then he did a roll of polar. He made a save and then rolled about three backwards to get it again. Oh. Listen, Nitan, I think we'll win the league. And if we don't, so be it. The difference is, Nitan, I'm not going to have a meltdown if we don't win the league. We've won five out of six. I can go a season without winning. Can you go a season without winning this time? There's the difference. I feel I've been too lenient on Pep this season. Well, I hope you can when he's giving you the best eight years of your life, Jack. I think he's entitled to a... He should, yeah, get constructive criticism, but he's entitled to a year off, mate. I am a teacher, just not a maths one. I'd take... Ooh. No. Exactly. Spot on. I him all bloody hell we're doing it now. I him all two million quid from uh which Joe ah there it is. Anderson. Isaacson. None of these were mentioned on the tour today. Uh Margaretson came on on a winger. Ah, I can't do yeah. Barton set off I was at that game. Man, if they did, you'd complain about that. <laughs> Put Cal Walker in that. No, they'll all moan about it. Yeah. <laughs> now Quinn in that, Cal Walker. Like it. We can afford a one season. Listen, we're one point off the top. Is it if that's a one season vacation, I'll take that all day and be one point off the top. I'm hoping next season's my one season vacation. Because if we got that four in a row, I could be like, don't care if we finish mid table. Martin Fulop. He ended up at um, Sunderland. Be nice to make things. Right, we're going to leave it there. Um, oh, David Pike snuck in with your legendness, legendariness at the last minute. Um, geez, I was thrilled we won the FA Cup. Anything more, just a bonus. Thank you, David Pike, for your five pound super sticker. You are a legend. Thank you so much. Um, Walker is the only city player with the most CS. But mine, I'm constructive. I mean, no, Jack, you're emotional, mate. You're not constructive. You get emotional. You get too emotional, Jack, because that's why you come out with your OTT comments of the give him a slap, send him back. You get emotional, Jack. There's the difference. You get too emotional. 
which I get it, but like Andrew said, we have we have become a bit spoiled. We have a little bit. Anyway, thank you to David. Thank you to LB and my son for your super chats. Big up to Blue Goat, Damesh, Lina and Simo for all your super uh, memberships and your gifted memberships. You are all legends. Thank you to Pat for joining us this early in the morning. You are a legend, mate. Thank you, man. Thank you, everybody. My it was voice a pleasure. Is I never again. Right. Um, see, I'm being nice. Nice to be emotional. Jack knows he's emotional, though. <laughs> Too emotional. That's the problem. I mean, yeah, I, I get emotional. Listen, you know this calmness, confident cockiness you say? Pat wasn't seeing any of that on Sunday in the WhatsApp group. I was not happy bunny on Sunday. No. <laughs> the reason why I put my phone off flight mode for matches like that. Yeah, but Jack, you know why that happened, mate. Told you that privately. You know why that happened. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. We'll be back Thursday night now with Thursday night chat with the countdown to the FA Cup. We'll also discuss the new PSR rules that are coming in. Looks like it's going to be on 85% of your income. Um, we'll discuss that. Will it help the league? Is it a good or a bad thing, etc.? cetera? Um, and we'll also discuss Newcastle. We're going to have a couple of Newcastle fans on as well. Um, if you want to see some more of me, and you might not want to do, I am on Judge Footy Mo tomorrow at 2.30, I believe. Yeah, I'll be wide awake for that. Yeah, you don't want to be. No. <laughs> 2.30, yes, 2.30 tomorrow. Yes, 2.30 tomorrow. Um, and then I'm on LBs on Friday, and there might be some stuff on City Extra as well. But anyway, take care all. Have a great evening. You're all legends. Smash that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. And yes, we had a bit of a whinge at the beginning, but it's not because we we want togetherness. Hashtag together is what we want back. Come on, City. Let's get it sorted out. Win, Take winging, care all. Winching together. Yeah. <laughs> Take care all. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Hey, see you later. Oh, 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 oh,